All right, welcome to this second video that I'm making. There was never a plan for this video. I made my first video, High Ren, for the students that I work with at Cardiff University. Um, there are about 150 of them, and so I was expecting about 75 views of the video, such is the nature of engagement among students these days. And yet a load more people than that watched it. It's got like 5,000 views or something, which is madness, and a lot of people have said very kind things about it and encouraged me to do this sort of thing more and so here I am doing the YouTube thing um, I'll put the link to the other video in the description for two reasons one is it's probably going to be a lot better than this what you see in this video but two I'm a YouTuber now and YouTubers put stuff in the description and so that's where um, I'm going to put the link for you and so today I'm going to talk about this video uh, sick Boy, or this song Sick Boy by Ren, it seems important to say that if this channel does go on to become a thing, it's not going to be called Psychologist Fanboy Analyzes All of Ren Songs. It's going to be broader than that. Uh, maybe like Psychologist Analyzes, dot, 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 and then I can analyze anything. Um, in fact, if you've got ideas for what to call the channel, then feel free to put it into the uh, put it into the comments. Look at me, I'm doing a proper YouTube thing here. Um... Yeah, if you notice an improvement in the camera quality, that's because I've stolen my son's YouTube camera. I'll put a link to some of his videos in the description as well, because he's going to love the views. Um, he's just throwing himself around the place, basically. But anyhow, I've stolen his camera. If you ever meet him, don't tell him I stole his camera, because he'd be furious. He's already furious that my high rem video got 5,000 views. Um, and so it's important to keep that information away from him for, uh, for now. So without further ado, let's get into the video. And uh, and I'll tell you what I think as uh, as as it goes. <laughs> just happened then a lot just happened right first of all did you notice that the music was too loud relative to the voice of the girl of like so I assume the girl in this video is playing like the role of a psychologist therapist sort of person did you notice the music was too loud like I was struggling to hear what she was saying I think that's genius I don't know if it was done on purpose it must have been it must have been done on purpose because I think that like so many times therapists, psychologists, folk are in front of us and they're saying stuff and we just, we can't hear them. We can't make sense of what they're saying. So it's like, you know, the, the music is, the, the noise is too loud to be able to understand the words that are coming from obviously an expert. You know, those big words that don't really, they don't land with us. And so like, it's interesting that the music was so loud. It was almost like, I guess he's experienced almost like a numbing effect of having someone use words with him but they're just they're not getting there you can see they're not getting there there's a barrier there so that's the first thing also did you notice the table was unstable which i think is really cool it's almost like a metaphor for the instability that um that he's obviously experiencing at that moment but probably the most important thing that i get from that opening bit is that girl who is obviously um a really good actress epitomizes the worst type of therapist or psychologist that I think exists you know you think of like where therapy came from back in like Freud's day and you get like this person in a position of psychological power they've got all their shit together they understand the human psyche and they work with the broken people in front of them they impart their wisdom on them to fix them I hate that that the cornerstone of therapy is understanding, compassion, and empathy, and sort of like those qualities. And the person who's playing the therapist in this video is showing none of those qualities. She is talking from a position of psychological power and zen, and that's so inauthentic, because that's not what life is. 
There's no such thing as psychologically zen human beings who are devoid of suffering, who are happy all the time. Like That doesn't happen. Like Our feelings, they ebb and flow throughout life, and that goes for all of us. And I think the best therapists are the therapists that understand that. And when they sit with their clients, they sit with their clients knowing that those people are not broken people, that they just need someone to listen to them and they need someone who happens to be doing all right at the time who knows some stuff about thoughts and feelings to try and help and that person needs to help with the understanding they might not be able to help and that's okay because like suffering and being a human being has such complexity with it that although i might be able to use words to try and help you sort of like relate to your thoughts and feelings more effectively that that there's every chance that 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 the solution to what you're going through just won't be that simple so there's got to be something more real here in like the therapeutic relationship relative to i've got it all together and you're broken and i'm going to fix you using these uh, using this magic it just doesn't exist <laughs> right okay so i don't know if this person is his medical doctor or his psychologist therapist sort of thing and of course like what's been going on for ren in his life from my understanding is that he's been suffering from physical health issues but has also been treated for psychological troubles um, right now for the purpose of the video i'm gonna interact with this like this is his therapist or psychologist rather than his medical person so forgive me if i've got that wrong okay so like there are a few things with what's going on there first of all you can still see the tone of the therapist the tone in that the girl's face is really brilliantly acted that um just you know brings this sense of i've got all the answers and you've just got to follow my instructions now like the instructions in this case are the quick fix that he was talking about you know he, he said he said something like quick fix snake oil oh dear me like that doesn't that maps onto my experience of um of mental health issues so so well which is people are so quickly looking for quick solutions to, to, for quick fixes i can give you a quick fix you want a quick fix i'll give you a quick fix right research coming out of australia shows that people that are happy tend to do six things they tend to exercise they tend to challenge themselves they tend to connect with others they tend to give to others they tend to self-care they tend to embrace the moment so you want a quick fix do those things more do those things more you'll increase the chances of you being all right on this earth but of course it's not that simple like most people in the world would know that those things are good for them and yet most people don't do them and the reason for that is because the human mind is complex it's not so simple to do things that are good for us sometimes because um, our minds get in the way but of course like when it comes to quick fixes the the biggest quick fix that people will jump to in this context will be psychiatric drugs and so when he's she's saying like take more pills or whatnot i'm gonna assume that those are psychiatric drugs um wow like it, they don't make sense to me psychiatric drugs not like when you look at the history of psychiatric drugs it's really interesting because the psychiatric drugs were never designed for mental health problems they were designed for physical problems for medical problems like tuberculosis or diphtheria or scarlet fever and then like after giving those drugs to people what they found as a side effect of those drugs some of them was to give people more energy and so they started giving those to people with mental health problems not as a cure for those mental health problems but as a tonic for those mental health problems and then like a short while afterwards they're just like oh my word these drugs are really cool like they're really helping people with mental health problems so how are they working and someone said something like, well, the drugs 
increase this chemical hormone, let's say serotonin. Um, and therefore, depression must be caused by low levels of serotonin. And then, like, you fast forward 50 years, literally, I'll put a link, I might even put the picture on the, the video here, of a recent paper that has come out, and they've been testing people with depression to see what their levels of serotonin are, and it turns out people with depression haven't got low levels of serotonin, which means that antidepressants are targeting a biological system that's got nothing wrong with it. And so when... And so... What I'm saying there isn't that, because I understand there'll be people watching this that are taking psychiatric drugs, and all everything I've just said can be really hard to hear. I totally, totally get that. And I'm not saying there's no place for psychiatric drugs. They certainly get people out of a hole during those really sticky periods. But long-term use of psychiatric drugs as a cure to mental health problems, that doesn't make any sense to me. And the reason why is because it's like mental health problems aren't that simple to be caused by one isolated biological symptom. Not when you think that like the contextual influences, uh, trauma as a child, poverty, um, you know, those sort of uh, things that happen to us in our lives that inform mental health problems. And then you're going to treat it with a pill that targets one biological system. It doesn't... I, I, Give you an example right imagine someone goes to the doctors they say hey doc i'm feeling pretty down i think it's because I'm, i haven't got the money to feed my family in my work i feel really undervalued and you know i've got this physical health problem this bad shoulder that's been bothering me for ages and then the doctor says to them ah you've got a chemical imbalance take a pill no no it's not that simple so like yeah take the pill for a little while if it gets you out of a hole but like in terms of treating the problem no you need to address poverty you need to address the workplace you need to address the physical health problem in order to be able to change what's going on up there and so i just i read this idea of quick fix i'm just not a fan of it because i think it undermines and underestimates the complexity of what it is to be uh, a human being and what it is to to suffer now like some people i'm going on here now we will get back to the song soon like some people will say to me oh how do you feel about psilocybin then so psilocybin would be like a magic mushroom type approach to um, mental health problems and I said oh, I've got no problem with it and I say well I can't believe that after everything you've just said about psychiatric drugs but the difference is that the, the people who are using psilocybin in a therapeutic way they're not making any claims about biological deficiencies chemical imbalances and the people they're using it with what they're suggesting is is that those drugs are giving people or taking people to a place where they can look at and interact with their pain and so it's being used to assist therapy rather than as like the active compound in therapy which i think makes a makes a big difference i'm not saying it's a quick fix it won't be a quick fix there are no quick fixes and i think that like it's important to acknowledge the complexity of uh, mental health problems and so I, I get his his frustrations here Brilliant. Right, so he's got this chaos going on in his mind. He's up, he's looking in the mirror, he's like trying to make sense of it, he's like got side effects, he's got pain, he's got all this stuff going on. He sits in front of the therapist, he's calm. Is this all making sense, right? Yeah, I, I think so. How many of us do that? We just sort of like sit in front of an authority figure or someone who's an expert and we just go, yeah, yeah, I think it's all making sense. In fact, like we're falling apart. Isn't that mad? I love, I love the juxtaposition there, the, the change from like the frustration and the anger and the chaos to being in front of someone and being calm. And do you know why we do that? We do that to make the therapist or the psychologist or the expert feel better. It's socially accepted, isn't it? It'd be socially sort of frowned upon and, and we'd feel embarrassed and ashamed if we were chaotic in front of, uh, in front of people. So we just revert right back into, yeah, yeah, everything's fine try to pinpoint the exact experiences from the past that are keeping you stuck. What can you tell me about your childhood? I can't really think. It's okay if nothing comes up right away. What I'd like you to do is take some deep breaths with me. In and out. In and out. Good. Now tell me the first thing that comes to 
I wonder if that's uh, another quick fix. I wonder if it's points at another quick fix. You notice you in and out, like that breathing stuff. And like you'll see mindfulness is sort of like, it's almost like the new fad in psychology. And I've got no problem with, with mindfulness, but it is being used widely. And um, and it's it could, someone could quite easily suggest, oh, this is just another quick fix. Like, and there'll be people out there with no experience in mindfulness. I'll tell them what mindfulness is and they'll say, what? breathe concentrate on my breath how on god's earth is that going to help me with regards to what i'm feeling and what's going on in my head and you could understand that and so like mindfulness isn't isn't a quick fix and like when you see it used as a quick fix it's really frustrating so like i see it used sometimes in workplace stress management like uh as a workplace stress management intervention and when it's used like in those places it upsets me and the reason why is because mindfulness just like drugs just like any sort of like therapeutic approach can sometimes place the blame at an individual's door so like if an individual within a workplace is suffering from stress a mindfulness intervention is essentially saying to them what you're doing right now isn't the right thing to be doing with your thoughts and feelings let's tell you how to interact with your thoughts and your feelings and you know that that's right to a certain degree like there'll be people out there that are doing the wrong things with their thoughts and their feelings and maybe mindfulness can help to address that but that's not the end of the story no you have to think well, what's causing the thoughts and the feelings to be this way in the first place and it's usually like harmful workplace practices like punitive measures like long working hours like little breaks like not feeling valued all of those things and yet workplaces will have stressed out employees They'll park all of that. They'll go, well, we're not going to change all those things. But what we will do, you know, is put some mindfulness, uh, uh, you know, offer our employees free mindfulness uh, activities. And you're just like, oh, no, like that's tokenistic then. What you're doing then is you're not really getting at the cause of the problem and you're not really understanding the role of context and influence in what goes on in people's minds and how if you control the context better, maybe the unwanted thoughts and feelings won't be happening in the first place. I'm not saying that mindfulness doesn't work. I am saying that it can help people relate to their thoughts and their feelings more effectively. But that is not the end of the story when it comes to uh, intervention. There has to be a more holistic approach. Like the wider society, the things that are going on in society, capitalism, the pursuit of money making, like the rat race, uh, climate change, um, sort of, lack of communities do you know what i mean all of those like contextual factors they're going to be affecting what's going on up here and i tell you what if we improve those things i think a lot of this a lot of the problems that we're seeing now with mental health problems changes totally i'll stop talking now because i'm ranting i feel like it's not me it's the world that's sick that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying like this therapist is placing blame at his door like you are sick you are broken and he's just like, hang on, what led to this? The world led to this. The world, the way the world is, like that wider context led to this. So why am I taking pills for supposed deficiencies or brokenness in me when the, what's going on around me is the thing that's the problem? We need to make a Science tells us this is suicide and still he's talking about climate change. I think he's talking about climate change here. And he's right, isn't he? He's right. Like those societal money making, rat racing, um, individualistic sort of notions, they are causing us to kill the planet. We pursue those things despite the fact that we're that we're killing the planet. And like people will have anxiety about that and what you're going to tell them that their anxiety is something to do with like their thinking patterns or uh you know biological deficiencies no it's to do with the fact that we're killing the planet and we can see it happening how can you sit there with that smile on and tell me that i'm sick yeah yeah that's right and you can see like the aggression that is playing out here towards the therapist i can understand this i can understand this uh 
this aggression that I'm seeing. It must be so frustrating for people to know that like their worries and their angst are coming from what's going on in their lives and then to have people tell them that somehow they are deficient in some way. said which is like the needless pursuit of wealth and fame and all those things are likely to lead to our downfall and this is something that I I think I, I agree with uh, with him and he's t I think there's rat racy notions in there as well you know like having pictures taken record labels sort of like I assume in the music industry there's like uh, almost like a pathway to success and you just get wrapped up in it and then you find yourself yeah with fame and with money but having you know worked really really hard for a long time having exposed yourself to uh people that are judging you constantly like those things are, are gonna are gonna take their toll and maybe there'll be people out there who look back on their lives and just think was it worth it was it worth it for the aggravation that i've had relative to spending time with family spending time in nature you know exercising um and sort of um doing some of those more straightforward and simple pursuits. I don't think he's doing the same. I think he's calling out some practices in society, in the music industry, and just saying these things are not helping. These things are, 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 are functioning to create a society that isn't that isn't working and so yeah good, it's good, good uh, enjoyed it enjoyed it again like loads to take from it um it started with like this idea of therapists from a position of power which i was deeply unhappy with it went on to quick fixes which i just i don't think there are when it comes to psychological troubles i think like these things are so complex that quick fixes they just they under they invalidate people's experiences of, uh, of mental health problems. And then it went on to suggest that the role of context in causing mental health problems and how our efforts need to go into changing that context as much as possible. And if we do that, then life will get better. Another good video. I hope that what I've said has made sense. Like I said, this is my second video. I wasn't planning on um, doing a second video, but... Um, now that I've done a second video, I might do a third video at some point on, on something. And so, if you'd like to subscribe, then go ahead. Smash that subscribe button. And if you don't, that's absolutely fine too. Because I don't really harbour lots of ambition to be a, a, a YouTuber. But your support in the comments and stuff was really cool for the last video that I did. And uh, I do want to thank you for that. Alright everyone, take care. And uh, I might see you again.